Racing on Tuesday takes place at the Vol. We're at the classic track, the 24th of Jan, and I trust that we find you well. Alistair Cohen joining me on the line for this selection show, courtesy of Gallup TV. 10 races on the program. Alistair, how are you doing? Yeah, Rahil, all good. A lot better than the last time we spoke, um, leading up to last Tuesday's card. Uh, racing's in a good place, I'd say, in South Africa at the moment. Obviously, the flavour of South African jockeys doing the business in New Zealand, Hong Kong, and then also now Dubai with Francie Herald booting home a, a big price double on Sunday night at Maidan. So hopefully that type of aura and uh, the uh, conveyor belt of, of good vibes around South African racing continues. Obviously, it's a, a huge week with the Cape Met coming up on Saturday. That card is out already. I've had a look at uh, most of it. I have a solid opinion on some races, but there, there's some that leave my head scratching. I think uh, <laughs> the the hardest race on the card has got to be the Pongratz Cape Flying Championship. I've absolutely no idea which way to look. That race is traditionally tough, though. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a cracking card on a Saturday at Hollywood Bets, Kenilworth. And we look forward to the action that is uh, set to come through on Saturday, the 28th of July. And as Alistair alluded to, the SA jocks flying the flag high around the world and uh, riding winners all over the world. Now, race number one at the Val commences at quarter past 12 on Tuesday, and uh, this race is uh, Maiden Plate. And uh, having a look at the lineup, Alistair, Maiden Juvenile Plate over the 1,000-meter trip. The favorite in the lineup is horse number three, Fire and Flames. But there's been a bit of support for number four, King of Queen, who is uh, trained by Ashley Fortune. Julius Mariba takes a ride there. Best intentions at 5-1, to one, along with That's My Baby. And then it's 11-2 to two and better about those. Now, when we have a look at race number one, obviously that form line behind Exchange Student comes up here. The best of those were horse, uh, was horse number five, who uh, did run back in uh, third position. And I'm, I'm speaking about the horses apart from the favourite here. But Fire and Flames, quite nice improvement last time out. Showed quite a bit of pace and uh, yep. a horse that can run well once again. Yeah, big improvement, uh, Rahil, from first start to second start. And, and gave, who was a red-hot favourite, exchange student, something to think about. But exchange student ended up extending over the final 100 metres. But Fire and Flames uh, of the race runners does look the right one because the exchange student form is so prominent here. Yeah. I think number five, Awelami, has a good chance of turning that form around, though. I think an extra furlong will suit the son of Duke of Marmalade, certainly the way he was finishing will suggest that. Um, so of the race runners, I think number five, Kawe Lami, might end up being the right one. There's obviously something up with the Ashley Fortune Yard because she's got three runners in this race and stable jockey Ryan Munger's on none of them. Um, so they're uh, probably concocting something here. Number four, King of Queen is drawn towards the outside. There hasn't been much rain around Johannesburg, so an outside draw over a 1,000 metres on the Vile Straits is not quite as advantageous as it would be on a, on a sticky track. But a uh, son of what a winter out of a mere pretty sister who was a good two-year-old and, and trained on to three and turned out to be OK, um, I think he's got the blood and the, uh, the pedigree to be most precocious out of Ashley's runners. And that early money that you speak about has got to speak quite a, vo uh, quite a few volumes. There are also quite a few punters that are involved in the ownership of number nine, Symbol of Love. So maybe watch for a little late plunge on her. I'll go out on a limb here and say that uh, I think an unraced horse might end up winning the first race. Which one is obviously the million-dollar question. Um, revolving your traffic to the quartets with number five, Kawe Lami, and the first-timer that shortens most. I think that will be my advice in the first race. Horse number seven, best intentions from uh, Candice's yard with uh, Keegan taking the ride here, two-year-old daughter of Rafif. Work is very good. Um, she's ready to go. She has had a grass gallop with exchange students. She was just behind, not far behind, very, very close behind, about a length or two behind exchange student. Also bear in mind, exchange student had the run under the belt. So uh, maybe you can give that an extra mark up, number seven, best intention. Expect her to run into the first four, not be too far away, but probably win in a race or two after this. Oh, perfect. Thanks for that, Alistair. Number seven, want to keep an eye on in race number one. But Alistair suggesting that a poss uh, possibly could go the way of an unraced horse. Now, we move along to race number two. And uh, race two is going to be run over the 1,000-meter trip. You need to get those bets on by 12.50 on the afternoon. This is the start of the buy part. And when we have a look at the fixed odds betting market, it's horse number one, Camaretta, that tops the betting boards at 16 to 10. It's then 28 to 10, time for charity, 9 to 2, Rio Supremo, 6 to 1, and better by those. Now, it's not a strong field, and it's not a race that's going to take a lot of winning. 
Number one, Camaretta. Three runs out the course for one second. Ryan Munger rides for Ashley Fortune and uh, Blinker's going on. Her last two runs, I'd say, have been slightly disappointing. Six behind Kinky Boots and then behind Welcome Breeze. There's been a couple of winners from that Kinky Boots form line, which is a positive. And uh, she's a horse that she should run well in this lineup here. And if she doesn't get the job, then uh, she's one that could just uh, struggle in the future. You know, Raheel, when Camarata's a favourite and at that price, then you know what you're kind of looking at in this uh, particular event. Again, Ashley Fortune's got a strong hand with three runners. And this time, stable jockey Ryan Munger is on board one of them, on board number one, Camarata. She's not a filly that you can follow off a cliff. She's not a filly that you can put the rent money on. But like you say, if not now, then when? Blinkers go on. Hopefully that gets her into the race. She probably loses her race with a lack of early pace. Um, so if the Blinkers just get her to travel a little bit better, and over a 1,000 metres, you'd hope so, because, again, that could be her undoing. That's her Achilles heel. But when you look around, number two, time for charity warrants respect. The other race runners don't inspire much confidence at all. Number six, a more perdida, though is a half-sister to a good staying filly in the form of Sprinkles. The fact she's making her debut over a 1,000 metres leaves a bit of a question mark to her chances. And I know number seven, Leah Licious, um, she was once with Candace. She's not a very big daughter of Futura. So uh, so what I know about her is a little bit of a worry, number seven, Leah Licious. So all in all, you just end up defaulting to number one, Camerata. It is the opening leg of the bar pot. I would hesitate to bank her. I'd include number two, Time for Charity, in the bar pot. Um, but like you say, it's a race that won't take much winning. Absolutely. Numbers one and two for Alistair in the first leg of the bar, but and maybe also we'll keep an eye on the first time to we'll see how they go down to the start. And maybe if uh, one of them do catch the eye, then it uh, could be worth an inclusion into race number two, what is the first leg of the bar. Pod. Now we're going to move along to race number three, which uh, commences the place accumulator at 13.25 over the 1,000 meter trip. And this is a maiden plate. Place accumulator is getting underway in this uh, lineup here. Now, when we have a, have a look at this race, Elusive Justice from the Johan Jansa van Feren Yard is your favourite here, this uh, 3 son of Elusive Fort. It's then 5-2 uh, to two about Brosnan, 9-2 to two about Iron Sky and Sagan, and then it's 12-1 uh, to one and better about those. Now, place accumulator-wise, I was hesitant to banker an individual or possibly go two horses. So, I'm going to go 8-9-10 in the first leg of the Pierre Alistair. But uh, for you, what's your thoughts on the race? I bank at number eight, Brosnan, because I know what the connections think of Civil Princess, who beat Brosnan by five lengths on debut. That was just 22 days ago. So I think that's probably the best level on, of form on offer. The interesting runner here is obviously the first time in a banana elusive justice. I'm sure you'll remember the mother. She was trained by Glenn Potts, and she was very, very good. She, she was a group winner, but um, obviously she's, uh, she's bred for a little bit further, but the the money does suggest that, uh, or certainly the uh, the betting boards do suggest that number nine, Elusive Justice, could or was expected to go well. This horse number 10, Sagan, is also nicely bred. The reason why it's Sagan and not Sagan, not the uh, the Tour de France cyclist, is uh, because Carl Sagan is a famous astrologer. And obviously, out of Laser Star, I'd assume that that's where they got the name from. So, so the first time is off. Are interesting additions to this race. I know that Brosnan was beaten by Iron Sky when they met on the 2nd of January, but I think improvement will will take number eight Brosnan past Iron Sky. Am I confident that he's already made winner? No, but I do think he'll run into the first three. Yeah, number eight, uh, Brosnan want to keep an eye on you. And uh, touching on Iron Sky, he's been beaten by Johan Jantel van Fier and runners in uh, all five of his starts to date, and I expect him to get beaten by one or if not uh, both of them once again in this lineup here. And as Alistair mentioned, number 10, Sagan, is a very interesting runner in the lineup. He's a horse that just uh, could show quite a bit of speed on debut, being uh, a 3 or son of VAR. And I want to keep an eye on at 9 to 2 in the market, just to follow the betting and see if there are any further betting moves for horse number 10 from the Ashley Fortune Yard. Now we're going to move along to race number 4, which is the start of the pick 6. And Alistair, I thought um, the best bet on the card came up in this race here in the form of number one, Swing Upon a Star. He's uh, got 60 kgs on the back. He's the best weighted horse in the lineup and he has beaten Saar Bom Bomba before giving him three kgs. He now receives three kgs from Saar Bomba and uh, I don't expect uh, Saar Bomba to turn the form around. Swing Upon a Star, I think, uh, should take a power of beating and a banker in all bets. 
Yeah, best bit of the day, quite comfortably, his last run, which he was entitled to need. He just got run off his feet by a better 1,000-metre horse than him in the form of Karangatang. I think going over 1,200 metres, of course, he won a group race at Hollywood Betts Gravel on Gold Cup Day over 1,200 metres. He fell in beating Sunblush, but the points that he won, um, he seems to have trained on. He's held his form to a, a reasonably high level, and I think that this race is just absolutely perfect for him. He's a bank of an all bets. He's best of the day. You're not going to get rich on him, and I think the card opens up past this, but um, I think professionals will be lining up number one, swing upon a star to win it. Uh, if there is a danger, probably number two, Zar Bomba. He got cut into severely last time behind Starcoin. Obviously, Starcoin's come out and framed that form over a further distance. There's something about number two, Zar Bomba, but for now, he's He's quite a margin behind number one swing upon a star and what swing upon a star has achieved compared to Zar Bomba, who's obviously had a few less races and uh, probably just a few uh, rungs lower down the ladder. Yeah, it looks to be a ready-made exacto one by two in race number four to start the pick six. But uh, Alistair and myself all in with number one swing upon a star. Now we're going to move along to race number five, which is the start of jackpot one. It is a classified stakes of the 2,400 meter trip. And we've got... I'd say two improving fillies in the lineup here in the form of Rarotonga Rose and Namakwa Blossom. Rarotonga Rose, a four time winner, and Namakwa Blossom, a two time winner. Not much to choose between them last time out. Namakwa Blossom, two kgs better off at the weight, and she could certainly turn the form around. But uh, place accumulator wise, I'm going to include both horses, and I think uh, they should fight out the finish in this classified stakes. They are the horses that are top in the best weighted column here, and uh, personally for me, I think it lies between them. What's your thoughts on the race? Raheel, I looked at this race, and I know that I'm, I might be biased here with number three, Banner Bridge, and I loathe comparing times on different race courses on different days. I think the only time where it holds severe water is when you compare times on, on the same day, on the same track, in the same condition, so many variables. But over 2,400 metres, two weeks apart, Banner Bridge ran five lengths behind Poets Warrior over 2,400 meters. The winner's time was, let's call it, 147 seconds. Rarotonga Rose over 2,400 meters won in 160 seconds. 13 seconds between the two. Um, now, either that's a misprint or Rarotonga Rose won off a incredibly slow pace or Poets Warrior won off a, a really fast pace. It, it's possible that both arguments... Um, could be used here. Remember, Poets Warrior went off to the front and stayed there. He, he showed no signs of stopping. What rings true, though, with Banner Bridge, though, is that there was a considerable distance back to third. He stayed every inch over 2,400 metres. He just found a, a progressive stayer on that day. So I think number three, Banner Bridge, is the horse to beat. And then with Lucky Udalakis' two three-year-old fillies, I think number six, the Michael Blossom, will turn it around with number four, Rarotonga Rose. Although I don't think there'll be much between them, I think that um, Rarotonga Rose and, and Keegan DeMillo's sort of sheer bloody mindedness got Rarotonga Rose home last time. Uh, it'll be a lot harder this time for Rarotonga Rose to be in front of Michael Blossom. The, the weights do suggest that they back that up. And uh, it might be the turn of, of David Shaw's runner to, to get the bragging rights over Jared Lawrence and Tessa Winners as runner. Interesting race. I think a lot will come down into how the race will be run. Um, there's a little bit of pace here in the form of flag bearer. And I think also understated would be prepared to go handy. If they go a pace, then that'll probably be better for number three, Banner Bridge. Um, so three and six for me in the accumulator. I'd include... Just because I'd be annoyed if I went out with her with the form that she's in. And I've also got a bit of time for Little Prince. I think if he goes the trip, and, and it's a query if he will, but the yards in form, if he goes the trip, he could be dangerous too. Yeah, he could certainly be uh, dangerous in this lineup here with Gavin Larina taking the board for Fabian Habib. And he's a horse that I've been keeping an eye on. Not quite sure he'll uh, see out the 2 4, but uh, we'll see how Little Prince does go. But he's certainly an inclusion into the pick six in uh, what uh, could be a race to go the way of the Phillies. If not, a Banner Bridge could just bounce back to winning ways after that uh, second last time out behind Poets Warrior, who looks to improve, in, who looks to be quite a nice improving sort from the Azzy Yard. Now we're going to move along to race number six on the program, which is set to be run over the 1600 meter trip. You need to get involved in your bets by 10 past three on the afternoon, and this is an MR72 handicap. Having a look at the fixed odds betting market. We've got Admiralty Arch at uh, three to one, Sequoia four to one, Tinder Dry, bit of support into five to one, Absolute Value six to one. It's then a seven to one and better bar those. 
I thought a type of race that could just produce a bit of a result. Pick six wise, I'm not gonna take any chances here. I'm possibly gonna go the field. But when it comes to the place accumulator, I'm gonna try to uh, narrow my selections down. I thought uh, horse number three, Sequoia, has to be a must inclusion into, uh, into all bets here. And then I thought a nice lurker could be horse number nine, Latuli from uh, the Fabian Habib yard. Now he has come down in the ratings. He does get a weight off the back from Donald Geertsen. And I thought at 7-1 to one in the market, he could just run a cheeky race over the 1,600 meter trip. The only trip, uh, his only win has come over the distance. And on a mark of 66 now, I think uh, this three-year-old son of Crusade could just have a bit more to offer. He's, uh, had, he's been given a bit of time to learn all about racing and I think uh, he could be ready to uh, put his best foot forward once again. But race number six, your thoughts? Is it a competitive race for you as well? Oh, it's wide open, Raheel. I'm, I'm uncomfortable. I've got three horses and I'm not overly convinced. They are 1, 3, and 8, Admiralty Arch, Sequoia, and Absolute Value. I'll race you home, Absolute Value versus Latuli, but I'll, I'll, I'll spun a coin between the two of which uh, I was going to go in with. Let's start off with Admiralty Arch. Um, I wouldn't call him my first selection, but because he's number one, we'll start with him. Uh, he went a mile last time and he, and he seemed to see it out behind Lady Calavera. Lady Calavera was coming off a, a year layoff. And uh, and her win was was full of merit, but the the fact that Admiralty Arch showed that he could go a mile last time. Pierre Stratum takes the ride. He'll probably be dropped in from a deep draw. I don't expect him to go handy because when Striker rode his five thousand five hundredth winner, that's exactly what he did. Dropped him and let him run on. And if in the same mood, um, then he could be difficult to stop. Number three, Sequoia banging at the door. Uh, African Torrent ran fourth in the Sea Cottage at uh, Turfentine on Sunday, so I think he's. Very, very close to winning. Ratings come down a pound for that last run. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if he got the job done. And then number eight, absolute value. Like I said, I spun a coin between the two Fabian Habib runners. I went with number eight, absolute value. Um, Latuli and absolute value have met each other twice. It's one one between the two. I just think number eight, absolute value. Might, you know that last run looks a little bit more appealing than what number nine Latuli produced last time. So that's my line of thinking there. But very, very tricky race. I had a good look, even though. Um, there might be a few above her. Number 11, time for that, I think also deserves a mention. She could very easily sneak into the first four. For that uh, three-time winner from 37 start, Lachelle Kruger, the trainer there. And uh, JP van der Mever sticking with the ride. And uh, he'll be hoping that he can get this one into the winner's enclosure in race number six. But... Uh, competitive lineup and a race where you possibly want to go as wide as the budget does allow. Now we're going to move along to race number seven, which is a Phillies and Mares 73 handicap of the 1450 meter trip. And you need to uh, get involved in those jackpot two bets by 1540 on the afternoon. When we have a look at the fixed odds betting market, your favorite is Lady of Power at seven to two. It's Mama Quera at nine to two, Bean My Bonnet at five to one, seven to one and better by those. Place accumulator wise, I just went with number three, Bean My Bonnet, and number six, Mama Quera. I thought uh, Bean My Bonnet could just have a lot more to offer after that maiden victory last time out. The cash was down for this individual, and she got the job done beating Spirit Princess, who ran a well beaten foot just yesterday over at uh, Turfentine. So, uh, not quite sure how that formula is going to work out, but there has been a winner from it. And, uh, Diego de Gouveia gets a ride for the banging form as he yards. So I think she's a horse that has to be respected despite her having a first run out the maidens. And then Mama Quera. The interesting thing for me is that Gavin Larina gets back aboard the six-year-old daughter of Karari, which is a positive, especially when he rides for Erico Verdanese. She's a winner over the distance, a second over the course and distance. And I thought uh, from a two draw, she could just be slightly... And she could be more handier than she normally would be and I think she's uh, got to run uh, she's going to run well in this lineup here but uh, what's your thoughts on the 7th? Um, I don't have too many strong thoughts on this race my first race number 6 Mama Quera but uh, I thought we'd get uh, a bigger price than what we're getting but anyway it's the the hand we've been dealt here Rick Hill. she hasn't won in 549 days that's a worry but she's banging at the door now. Her last run to Quantum, I know that she meets Quantum again. Um, Quantum's not the easiest to follow, although she's got to go into the pick six. I think number six, Mama Quera, is a little bit more reliable. With Gavin Larina taking over for Erico Veronese, I think that's got to be a, a notable jockey engagement. Um, Gavin's ridden her 11 times for two wins and five places, so you know that you're going to get a, a fairly good run for your money with number six, Mama Quera, with Gavin on board. Number three, Bianca Bonnet, spot on. She's got the most scope to improve. Of course, she is 
related to the likes of Bunker Hunt. I think the more be in my bonnet races, the better she'll be. Although there are valid queries and concerns about the form line uh, of her, her maiden win on the 8th of December, all she could do was win, and she won well. And as you mentioned, the yard's on fire with Kiss Me Captain winning the Swallow Stakes at Turfentine on Sunday. And the other horse I backed it up with is the stable companion, number eight, Letha. Samanga Kamala takes the ride. Last time she ran in a novice handicap, she uh, ran against boys as well. She didn't disgrace herself. It was also her first run after a long, long break. She got scratched. She was quite to run not so long ago, and she got scratched. So I don't think she's the easiest around. I think they might have a couple of issues with this daughter of Duke of Marmalade. But the blinkers are on. She's down and trip. If she doesn't uh, do too much with those blinkers on in the early stages... She could be the one to spring things in this wide-open seventh race on the card. Lady of Power is a good filly. I think she, she'll run her race. Uh, like I said, number four, Quantum, hard to read on her day. She's dangerous. And there's our favorite, number 10, Scott Adito. Always worth a 10 rand each way because she could get you out of trouble. But she's not one that you can go to the well with. Is Scott Adito and the day that we leave out, that's the day that uh, she'll spring up on us. But um, yeah, jokes aside, uh, she's a horse that uh, she's the type of lurker that you certainly want to throw into the pick six. But uh, Dita, the interesting runner here for Alistair from the Azzy Yard with Samanga Kamalo taking the ride. And uh, numbers three and six, the two horses that we agree on in race number seven. Now we're going to move along to race number eight, which is a uh, merit rated 88 handicap. Over the 1450 meter trip. Now, when we have a look at uh, the lineup here over 1450, the banker and the place accumulator comes up uh, for me uh, in the form of number 12, Southern Blaze. Now, Stuart Pettigrew has uh, gone on and on about uh, this individual not uh, being drawn well in his start, and it's clear to see he hasn't had the best of draws in quite a few of his starts. But come Tuesday, he's got no excuses. Pole position draw in a field of 12, he's gonna get possibly the run of the race and at 28 to 10 in the market I think he's going to go extremely close to getting that uh, next career victory he's in some good form at the moment he's been uh, he hasn't been beaten far in his recent starts behind the likes of Wolf's World and Eye of the Prophet in the last two runs and I think uh, he's now a two-time winner but with just 52 and a half cages on the back I expect Southern Blaze to uh, run a cracker here in this lineup left him out and you want to know the biggest uh, omen is that Co owner Paul Marks has just sent me a message. Um, he's on his way to the Mets and wants to know who I fancy in the Mets. So, so there we go. I'll reply to Paul once I finish talking about his horse. Um, yeah, I've left number 12 Southern Blaze out. I'm not sure that he's as good as these, as these horses who have been running at a high level whose ratings have dropped. I hear what you're saying and that he's been seriously unlucky and in his last three starts, even the run to Berengaria in September last year, he actually should have won that race. He, he conceded so much ground at the start and, and made a, a lot of it up, finishing three lengths behind Berengaria. But if you look at the company he's kept and look at the company that horses like Nordic Rebel, Elusive Swan, and uh, horses of that ilk, and Captain Hansard, who I actually give a good each-way chance to here, um, I don't know if his level of form is quite as good. I've gone with three, six, and nine in my place accumulator. Three Nordic Rebel is just a fourth place away from uh, taking his career earnings past a million rand. Erika Verdenese and Gavin Larina team up. Ignore the last run. He's a lot better than that effort. I think that he's probably best at the Vile as well. So I think that I think that he'll give a good account of himself. Number three, Nordic Rebel at the ripe old age of nine. He's done connections so proud. Number six, Elusive Swan comes out of the very strongly franked Billy Bowlegs run. At his penultimate start in the uh, Heritage Consolation, he finished close up behind Fateful Day. At the weights, number six, Elusive Swan will beat Fateful Day. So I think that uh, he's also got a good chance. And then number nine, Indus Nut. If he gets a soft lead, and I don't see much competition for the lead, he could be difficult to peg back. He's winding towards his peak now. Candace Dawson trains. Malicella Kachedi takes the ride. They teamed up with a nice win at the VAR last week in the form of Just Be Nice. I think the race might end up being run to suit number nine in this night, and he could be very dangerous from the front end. Another competitive race. Um, first choice here would be number six, Elusive Swan. And like I mentioned, number five, Captain Hansard. Put him in your pick sixes and your jackpots. Um, I think he's now down to a very competitive mark. I think that he'll run a much better race this time. You mentioned number six, Elusive Swan, because uh, when, I, when I had a look at the race, I was uh, stuck between Bankery and uh, Southern Blaze or going with Elusive Swan as a bit of cover, but uh, just going all in here with the 
Southern Blaze and uh, Elusive Swan certainly at 14 to 1 in the market. I don't think uh, you can get hurt, especially from an each way perspective. I think he's a horse that uh, Chase, Mo Chase Mojan has gotten to know well and uh, he should uh, run well in this lineup here. Now we're going to move along to race number nine on the program, which is Phillies and Mayors 91 handicap. So it's uh, quite a strong race, a competitive race. Place accumulator wise, I'm not taking any chances in the last leg. I'm going with four horses and I may double up or triple up here or I may just come through once but uh, I think it's a race where in the last leg you want to be rather you want to have a few horses rather than uh, I'd say have a banker here one two four six those are the numbers for me Clefutis Eternity Ring not much to choose between them when we have a look at their form lines uh, behind uh, Rain in Holland then number four Princess Philippa who's uh, banging form in search of that hat trick of victories her last four starts have yielded three victories and uh, she's a horse that should run well despite her uh, returning of a rest. And then number six, Escape Artist, who is unbeaten at the course. And uh, she gets the two and a half cages off the back. She bounced back to a form last time out in a Phillies and Mayors 94 handicap. She's having a peak run. And from draw two, I think uh, she could just represent the value at around, at around uh, I think it's 11 to 2 in the market, if I'm, if I'm correct in that. Yeah, into 9 to 2 in the market now. So I think uh, Escape Artist could just uh, run a cheeky race here. Yeah, I like two horses here. I'm most keen on number four, Princess Philip. I think Stuart Pettigrew will, will have a good chance of winning this. Um, she comes in, in such good form, difficult form to recommend. Three starts back in the 15th of September. I remember chatting to Stuart because he had that Captain Pig. And I thought Captain Pig, well, I still think Captain Pig's very good, even though she's lost her way since that win. And he told me, you know, my stable companion is going to chase it. There's going to be a big runner. And there won't be as much between them as you think. And since then... Princess Philip has just kept on winning. Of course, uh, the connections and Stuart go back a long way with Surcharge and a few others. Uh, they spread their wings out to Robbie Sade with a winner yesterday in the form of Cape Lartz. And I think number four, Princess Philip, you know, going through life of, a, of an average merit rating, she was a lot better than that. As we all know, it's, it's almost cliche to say that Silvanos get better with age, but it, it's a proven fact. And, um, you know, I think number four, Princess Philip is the one that they all need to beat. She's, as you say, call some distance suited. She's force suited. Um, she is my top choice. And then I was looking around for backup because you are right. You don't want to go in with a banker here in a, in a wide open handicap with horses that have competed at a high level. I'm a big fan of this five number uh, of this horse number five, Wakanda. But then if you look at the run on the 2nd of January, how can you like Wakanda and not like escape artists, especially with the two and a half kilo um, weight allowance that's the under Sasebo carry? So I think number six escape artists could be the one to chase number four, Princess Philippa home. Number five, uh, Wakanda. She was just terribly disappointing last time out. I actually thought she'd uh, get the job done in that lineup there because she looked, she looked perfectly uh, placed in the race. She was weighted to go extremely close. And uh, just a below par run, beaten nine and a half lengths behind uh, Terra Time. But uh, she's a horse that uh, it would be no surprise to see her bounce back to some of her better form, yeah? I'll kick myself if she did because uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Wakanda. I think that she's got a few wins to come. I'm of the impression, even though she's placed over 1,600 metres, I'm not sure she quite, get home, quite gets home over 1,600 metres. On the inside track, probably her best chance of, uh, of winning over a mile. She moved through with a lot in hand last time and then she just completely spazzed it out. I'm not too sure what happened. She's worth another chance or two in time to come, but I'd like to see over 14.50 before I put my head down. And the positive is uh, that Wakanda does run over 14.50 and she absolutely loves the distance. Two wins from four starts. So uh, she's certainly one that has to go into the last leg of the pick six. Now we're going to move along to race number 10 on the program. The final race uh, at the Val on Tuesday. 10 past five is when race number 10 gets underway. And this is... MR66 handicap over the 2000 meter trip. Favorite Pacific Express at 4 to 1, Rosie Lemon 9 to 2, Mirren 11 to 2, 7 to 1, and better about those. Now we'll start with uh, Pacific Express, who does return off a rest, fully taking on the boys, a young uh, fully a three year old. She does return off a 103 day layoff, 59 and a half cages on the back. For you, Alistair, would it be a surprise if she were to win? It would be a surprise if nothing won this last race, Raheel. There's so many in here with chances. Um, I must confess, I'm I'm fairly keen on a, on a horse here. Yeah? I'm keen on Drop Maroon's number 11, Global Breeze, at a big price at a stall gate number one. Last time behind African Torrent, finished alongside Bally Magic. 
Uh, number 11, Global Breeze, has got a, a beneficial pull at the weight to stay in front of uh, Bally Magic. I like the runs to Rarotonga Rose. I love the runs to Twin Turbo when staying on late. I think that 2,000 meters plus is probably his best distance. And I think of a lot dish weight of 56 and a half kilos and a, and a fairly weak handicap, but he could be the one that they all need to beat. But there are lots in here with chances. Number two, Monsieur Chevelle's evidently turned the corner. Um, he's come well. He looked like he'd, he'd lost an average horse through his career, but uh, he looks like he might be a little bit better than average. So he's not one to leave out. Um, and then down the page, obviously, number six, Pacific Express, the horse that you opened up with. She likely raced. She could continue improving. The fact that she went 2,400 metres with no fuss last time out is definitely a good sign. Muzi Yeni takes the ride. Um, she's off for 103 days, but I don't think that's much of a worry because she's won off a break before. And then down the page, number nine, Rosie Lemons, another horse that's got to come into the conversation. Calvin Abib takes her out for Farnie Bronkhorst. Since winning her maiden, she's maintained her form. She's come down three pounds for a recent run behind Toffers. Uh, nine, Rosie Lemons, another one that's got to come in. So I think number 11, Global Breeze, in each way playing the last. Yeah, quite a competitive lineup. And Alistair with number 11, Global Breeze, at 16 to 1 in the market and uh, could just represent some nice value. Narrow first choice for me will be number two, Monsieur Cheval. As Alistair mentioned, he looked to be a horse that uh, would just uh, be a one time winner, an average sort, but he's actually gone on to get that second career victory. Last time out, he met Stronger Company and he was uh, only beaten five lengths. I think with the two and a half cages off the back and uh, comes into a weaker race, I think he could uh, certainly be competitive here and uh, he'd be the narrow first choice for me. So, numbers two and 11, certainly horses to play around in race number 10. Now, we're going to move along to the suggested part of the show and Alistair will take you through his suggested bet and thereafter, I'll take you through my suggested. Just a bet. Alistair, take it away. I think we've both gone for a place accumulator on this card, Raheel, so, and, and we're not uh, singing from the same hymn sheet in some of the races. First leg runs at 25 past one with race three on this 10 race marathon on a Tuesday. Uh, the Vile have opened up with Bank in the first leg, number eight, Brosnan, although I don't think he's passed the post. I think he'll run in the first three. Best bet on the card in the second leg of the place accumulator, race four, number one, swing upon a star, and then it opens up from there. Then I've gone three and six in leg three, Banner Bridge and Namakwa Blossom, by one, three, and eight, Emerald, the Arch, Sequoia, an absolute value. I'm optimistic I'll at least double up there. Then on to race seven, which is leg five. I'm hoping to survive that. Three, B and my bonnet. Six, Mama Quera. And number eight, Letha are my trio in race number seven. Uh, race eight, I've got number three, Nordic Rebel. Six, Elusive Swan. And number nine, in this night, we go through the three times table. And then race nine, the final leg of the place accumulator, four and six. I think Princess Philippa will win. I don't know if you need escape artist, but if you are keen to double up and you're not mad about Princess Philippa off a lot layoff, then maybe she's the wise one to include. So four and six for me in the last leg of the BA. We certainly both have gone for place accumulators and uh, we'll start, uh, I'm going to go through mine now and uh, in race number three, Alistair's going to banker number eight, Brosnan, but I'm going with a bit of cover, eight, nine, ten, followed by banker number one, swing upon a star. We're both in agreement about uh, swing upon a star being the best bet on the card, followed by numbers four and six, by three and nine, by three and six, by banker 12, and then in the last leg, numbers one, two, four and six. Princess Philippa, certainly the one to beat, but uh, just going with a bit of cover. Hope, hopefully, I can double up, if not treble up in the lucky last. Alistair, as always, thank you for uh, joining us for this Gallup TV selection show. All the best and have a fantastic week. Cheers, Raheel. Same to you. It will be a great week, I'm sure. Um, we all look forward to the Mets down in Cape Town. For those that are going, I, I trust you'll enjoy it. I trust it'll be a, a memorable day. It always is. And uh, we'll chat again soon. Absolutely. Just one more thing before you go. Your top choice for the Met? To make it snappy. 51 and a half. Keegan DeMello sweating down to 51 and a half. Um, I, I was initially hot on comedy dung. But the more I look at it, I think that uh, she's going to take all the beating. Last three-year-old filly was Osa Zana. Uh, and I dare I say she had uh, probably achieved as much as Make It Snappy had at this stage of their careers. I think she'll win it. Yeah, Make It Snappy, the one for Alistair, with just 51 and a half kgs on the back. And she's looking to make it three successive Group 1 victories for the Hollywood Syndicate. And uh, that would be a fantastic achievement for the Hollywood Syndicate there. Anthony Dalpesh, Owen Heffer, Devon Heffer, all involved there. And hopefully she can pull it off. But uh, as always, thanks to Alistair for his insight into racing at the Vol on Tuesday, the 24th of January, 2023. Ten races on the program. And all the best, guys. Hopefully you find all the winners.